Hello and welcome to the third episode of Economics. I'm your host, David Angelo. Today I'm going to ask you to forget everything you know about tax revenue, which for most Americans should require no effort whatsoever. Now it's Saturday night here, so if you hear any screaming or house music in the background, it's because my zero marginal tax rate neighbors decided they wanted to use my taxes on a subwoofer. So anyway, I mean, let's get on to it. Today's topic, top marginal tax rates. The top rate, income tax rate, in through the early 60s, through the Kennedy-Johnson tax cuts, and, and actually through the mid-50s or so, is, I think, 91% on incomes over 200000 And we're, And what happened as a result of that? Well, I mean, America went through, first of all, its greatest period of economic growth ever. What's amazing about this is, if you even bring this up now, people don't even believe you that that was in place 50 years ago. You know, Malcolm says that you have to put 10,000 hours into something before you get really good at it. And judging by those comments, he must have put all of 30 seconds into researching tax policy. Nobody paid those high rates. For instance, you had Secretary of the Treasury Joseph Barr complaining to Congress that in 1967 there were 155 Americans making over $200,000 that year who paid no income tax at all including someone who made $23 million. As a result of rich person tax avoidance, you had the Tax Reform Act of 1969, which introduced the alternative minimum tax, which we still have to this day. And that was signed by Richard Nixon, who the following year made $200,000 as president, which put him in the 70% tax bracket. But he paid precisely $789 in taxes that year, or roughly 0.4% of his income. I wish I had Nixon's accountant. Jeez, every time I go to my CPA, I end up needing CPR. The IRS today is way more aggressive than they were back then, and that's very easy to prove for anyone who isn't an ideological stooge. For instance, at the end of fiscal year 2007, GDP in this country was a little over $14 trillion. The IRS collected in personal income tax $1.163 trillion. So they were able to collect $8.2 six percent of GDP as income tax. Now if you go back to the glory years of 1959, uh, GDP was 523 billion dollars, IRS collected 36.7 billion dollars or 7.01 percent of GDP. Now that's despite the top rate at that time being 90 percent. So they got more taxes now than they did then and our top rate is about one-third of what it was. The top marginal rate is irrelevant, okay? Anyone who cites that 91% historic tax rate as a justification for raising taxes now is a fraud. And you can take that to the bank, assuming there's not a, a 1040 line item for it next year. To demonstrate what raising taxes on the rich will do, let's just look to Barack Obama's own 2013 budget. Now, in that, on page 245, he estimates that the debt this year will increase by $1.2 trillion, which we'll say is this, okay? Now, if he lets the Bush tax cuts expire for people making $250,000 or more a year, by his own estimates, that will reduce this deficit by this much. That. $29 billion out of $1.2 trillion. That's all it does. It's not debt reduction. We still have all this debt. But this is it. This is why we're practically at civil war with the, you know, the whole country here. Basically, we're screwed. So what I'm going to do is uh, just take this money to go buy drugs for my neighbor. I'll see you next week.